Welcome to another game review where we look at survival horror game The Grey Hill Incident, where an alien invasion takes place in a small neighborhood in the early 90s. Among the terrified residents of this invaded town, you play character Ryan Baker, who is equipped with nothing more than a baseball bat and a revolver with a few bullets, as he navigates his hometown looking for help to rescue his abducted son. Let's dive in and review the main elements that make up this sci-fi indie horror game. The control of the character quickly became one of the most frustrating parts of the game. If you want to run, you can only run for a short while before being met with a long cooldown of walking very slowly. The intentions are clearly to stealth around the map, but this is very difficult due to the positioning of the aliens, places to hide, and how slowly the aliens move around. You may find yourself waiting a very long time for them to pass. There was one frustrating moment in particular in the game where it had limited places to hide. It was an open space around an objective I desperately needed and had already spent a long time trying to get to. I found myself trying to loop the aliens for a very long time and I tried to use line of sight to lose them, but apparently these aliens seem to be able to look through solid objects and just dart straight for you. I had to give up and let the aliens abduct me to reset me back to my last checkpoint, which was not close. Thanks guys. It's sometimes manageable when you have buildings you can duck into and hide, but this doesn't always work and you're left wondering whether they've left or if they're lurking nearby. There are places to hide, such as inside a closet, outhouse or bin, but you have a very small gap to peer out of and you can't always see or hear the aliens moving closer or further away. The focus clearly is on being stealthy, but it's very difficult to do this successfully or in a way that feels rewarding. It would be helpful to be able to have tools to pick up, such as a bottle that you could throw and distract the aliens to move them away from an area that you needed to get to. The game does appear to steer you in a certain direction by blocking roads with trees or not letting you go further in a certain direction which is helpful to a point as it gives little to no clue about what you need to do or where you need to go, instead giving you a very vague objective with no map to look at such as find Brandon's house. Great, who's Brandon again? What street does he live on? What does his house look like? Occasionally, you might find a flashing light to indicate an objective you need to get to, but these flash all the time and not at the time that you actually need them. There is a lot of attention to detail and a lot of time has gone into making this feel like a real rural farming town. But overall, it's a very dark game. And whilst you can adjust the settings, the majority of the game mainly just looks like varying shades of grey with a foggy haze over it particularly when outside, which adds to the overall disorientation you are already feeling. It makes it very hard to differentiate from one house to another without key distinguishing features. The houses inside mostly look the same with the same objects, with the exception of certain objective rooms, which have many interesting things to look at, but unfortunately not ones that you can interact with. The aliens themselves are not particularly scary or intimidating in the way that they look, act or move, especially when they attack, you only see the top of their head, and you're left wondering if they're tickling you to death or motorboating you. My interactions with them have often left me laughing at how silly they are. You can shoot them with two bullets to kill them or hit them with a baseball bat to stun them, which is much more entertaining but not always reliable due to the odd cooldown of the bat. The majority of the characters are static and their movements are very limited in how they speak and move, which makes them feel more like an animatronic than a person. There is much to be said for some of the peculiar sounds in this game. Our little space friends, who I've come to nickname the Nom Nom Aliens because of the sounds they make when they That's attempt hilarious. to abduct you, are That's responsible hilarious. for some very odd sound effects indeed. The comical laser sounds they make when scanning areas oh, got, in the town remind me of something at Toy Story. You do get an alert sound when you've been spotted, right, which I always find it, helpful, the house, but it doesn't end as soon like as the, right the danger house. is gone, which can be a little bit confusing. Trying to hide it from My feelings yeah. towards the voice acting is mixed right. overall. They're the right emotion and tone was usually yeah, there in the main sure. character, Ryan, but his lines sounded like they were recorded like individually, and unfortunately, they were often <laughs> overlapped. <laughs> I loved the idea of an alien abduction story to navigate, and from the opening scene, it felt like the foundations laid at the start were setting the path for an engaging story. However, the story quickly became odd and confusing. I found myself having no personal attachment to the characters and being more irritated by most of them than feeling sympathetic. 
the majority of the game was not scary, with the exception of arriving in the church to find the pastor preaching alone fiercely in the dark before being abducted, which was fantastically dramatic and intense, and I would have loved to see more moments like this one. The ending infuriated me to no end, and I felt like I'd wasted my time to achieve no successful goal. It's difficult enough to get through one playthrough of this game without wanting to rage quit at the many frustrating obstacles. An example of this is towards the end of the game, where you find yourself in a gigantic cornfield, and you need to go to very specific parts of the field to trigger multiple subsequent parts of dialogue to get the objective that you need to appear before you can move on. This part of the game nearly broke me. There were no visual clues, and your character doesn't automatically look in a certain direction when a sound is made. When you finally get the objective to trigger, you find a torch on the ground. And it's a shame that this isn't utilised as a visual clue to steer you around the field. I really wanted to like this game. I was very excited about the idea of playing an alien abduction horror game, but there were just too many issues that greatly affected my enjoyment of playing. When asking my viewers what they thought, feedback from them included, it's not a fun game to watch, they were annoyed for me, and they would have given up a long time ago. Unfortunately, I would not recommend the game as it is. There are many things that would need to be adjusted to make this enjoyable, particularly gameplay and story objectives. On a positive note, though, I did very much appreciate the tinfoil hats for the dog, the teddy bear and the cat. If an alien invasion comes our way, I'll definitely be kitting out all the animals and teddy bears with their own hat. I also really want justice for a pwn, the only character I found myself caring about in this game. If you go into this game with an entertaining B-movie perspective, then there are parts of it that are fun. It is a shame to give this game a low rating, especially for something many people have put time and effort into. But unfortunately, there are just too many issues that affect the overall enjoyment of the game. I would give this game two out of five stars. Thank you very much for watching my review. Catch me at the next game.